Okay, what we have here is your building, uh, you know, whatever size you're going to have. I'm going to make this uh, video generic for anybody, but I'm just going to start off with a six, 16 foot uh, wide building and there's 716 plywood on each side. We're going to call that half inch on each side. So it's, it's close enough to 16th inch off, no difference and everything grows. So I don't think you're out of line by saying 16 foot one. And so that's 16 foot, half inch plywood on each side. So 16 foot one is our whole total width of the building. And then we want to have, what is our run? So half of that, you know, if you have a center line point, half of that is going to be 96 and a half. Okay, so eight foot, half inch. Because you got 16 foot one inch, half of that is eight foot one, a half inch. And so that's our run. Now our rise, is going to be uh, we're just going to generically say six and twelve uh, makes a nice cool looking roof and uh, not too shallow so at, at that going up um, we're going to have four foot because uh, six and twelve is for every six inches it travels it goes up six inches so six and twelve means that six travels six uh, it goes up six inches for that so by the time you go continue going up to eight foot uh, half inch, you're going to have um, a four foot and a hair, whatever, not just four foot, four foot uh, top. Okay, that's where it's going to be. The four foot is going to be to this point right here, actually. Uh, it shows it right there, but that, uh, it meant it's supposed to be right there. That's the top, that's four foot. And the center of that um, uh, ridge board, okay, you want to have your ridge board. Uh, longer, deeper than your rafters because the rafters, uh, when you cut them sideways like that at a pitch, they become taller. And so, for example, if you're going to have two by six here, you want two by eight there. You know, if you're going to have two by ten here, you want two by twelve there, and it keeps going. If you have to, because your boards are so deep, let's say you got twelve inch and you can't find fourteen inch, then you simply add another piece because it should be solid. So you take a two by two and nail it on there or whatever. Okay, screw it on. And uh, so then it would be fine. You really want to have solid backing right there for your ridge and your rafter touching. All right, now um, I want to show you how to do it with a squangle. Now squangle is totally awesome, killer's tool on the planet. And uh, it says here, common rafter. Okay, it says common rafter right there. It's hard for you to see. Don't know if you'll be able to see it. Uh, no, just gonna have to trust me. On these things it says common rafter. On the other side it says hip and valleys. Uh, we don't care about that in our project. It's just gonna be a straight roof. And so you wanna go to common rafter and you wanna set it at six. So this line, this line right here is set at six. Okay, you'll see seven and eight and nine, whatever. Uh, you have for six and 12, you wanna set this thing at six. So this line literally is at six and tighten the screw. Okay, it's actually a little thumb screw, whatever. Tighten it so it's never going to move again for your project. If that's our, if this is our project, it's never going to move again. So set it at six and you're done. Now to make your plumb cut, you can see here the way this uh, thing looks. So you take your board and you set it up like that. And you take your uh, swangle, put it on there. And you can see that's going to be the plumb cut. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing right now. For you. I want to do this by hand because it's too hard for me to see what you're seeing in there. So I'll go ahead and put it up on a uh, uh, tripod and do the uh, next part. Okay, so you can watch the whole deal. All right, so right now you can see though that's going to be our plum cut. That's going to give us our first plum cut, which is right there. Okay, that's our first plum cut. Then we'll, we can have our, we can do lengths. We, lots of people just get all these things done and come back and snap a line and cut all their plumb cuts on the end of the tail. Just in case a uh, ridge line moves or something else, you don't got to try to make everyone line up perfectly out here. You get this one here best you can. Everything's, you know, whole, whole building's all squared up and everything so nothing can move. But still, uh, professionals, when they're framing, they'll get this one here all done and they'll let this one just run fly wild, doesn't matter. And then they'll come back, snap a line and then make your plumb because they'll, they'll take your thing down to the end, wherever it ended at the building and uh, put it on, they'll have a line snapped up on the top 
uh, along all of them and then they'll just cut them right from the line and that way they all end up absolutely perfect okay but anyway you can do whatever you want uh, but that's the way professionals do that um, as far as the bottom cut uh, as far as uh, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and show, uh, show you this and I'm going to show you the bird's mouth next so we'll go ahead and cut this one and then uh, do the next step okay I'm going to go ahead and make my plum cut and so I'm going to set it up you know depending on how long it is if it doesn't matter then you just get away from anything any kind of cracks in the wood nobody needs that aggravation if you have plenty of length if you don't have plenty of length go right from the point and straight down and you, just, you live with whatever you got um, so anyway, I'll just come down like I normally do, just to stay away from that, is uh, if I run an extra, and usually you are. And so that's your mark. So again, you set it 6 and 12 on common rafters. So common rafters, 6 and 12. You come over and you see your plumb cut right there. Okay, you got you to set on right on the edge. You draw a line, and then you're going to just cut it. <coughs> Now you want to be able to do your uh, bird's mouth. Now your bird's mouth are set up on these things here. It's so awesome because that is your bird's mouth. It's already set up. You've just used it for your common rafter. Okay, you got that totally set up now. And then you, you know, this is going to go up against the uh, uh, whatever board you're going to use. You know, it would be a two by eight. But anyway, <laughs> this is your ridge board. And it's sitting like that, actually like this. And uh, this thing here supposedly skates up, you know what I mean, to the halfway mark. That's where you're supposed to be at, the halfway mark on this. So it skates up to that point. So you would be able to have it like this, and it would supposedly meet. Uh, but anyway, we don't really care. You can have it like that, especially if you're going to use a uh, continuous vent. That really doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, so you're set up like this, and that's your... Um, plumb cut for the top of your rafter now you want to make your bird's mouth and it's literally all set up for you and uh, so it's that is the bird's mouth right here so you put it on like that and make your mark and now so here let me just go ahead and do it real quick uh, that's your bird's mouth all cut you get it all nice and snug up there nothing moved everything's the same and uh, so that's your cut okay now when you cut this thing out uh, I'm going to go ahead and just make the other uh, one just in case we want to. Um, we're just going to decide, oh, we're going to do it perfectly. We don't care about the others. So we're going to make it cut anyway. I wouldn't. I would cut them all at the end, but sometimes it's hard. You know what I mean? Especially if you're not a professional. It's hard to get up there. It's hard to get on a ladder. It's hard to get all that stuff done. Professionals just jump up there. They lean over the work and snap a line and cut it all. But for a homeowner doing it one time in their life, yeah, you best better just make sure the, the building's perfectly square and everything else. Do the best you can with that. And then just make them all the same length. You know what I mean? And then they'll just be good enough. All right. So anyway, that's your plumb cut for the ridge. And it's a plumb cut for your gutters, if you will. Okay. That's your overhang, whatever you've decided it is. So if it's going to have a two-foot overhang, you bring it farther out, you know. Uh, but if you're, you know, this is just set up for an experiment. So whatever your... Uh, overhang is you remember you're going to add a piece of fascia onto that too okay so your fascia is going to go on there I guess it should go like that your fascia is going to go on there and uh, so that's that's another dimension so let's say you wanted to have um, you wanted to have two foot from the wall to there if it, if it mattered to you that this is precise you just simply measure over two foot including your fascia okay but anyway if you don't care then neither do I Whatever your dimension is, it is. Whatever your length is, that's your overhang. It's nice to have a two-foot overhang. That's the standard in the industry, and I just love it. Two-foot overhang is great. So if you can give me two foot from here to there, perfect. You can cut off an inch and a half if you want to be exactly two foot. Cut off an inch and a half for your fascia, and you're all done. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to cut these. Uh, let's just say I've already measured, and I know from here to my to my top of my wall. So this is the wall. Let me set it up. I don't know if you can still see it. Uh, this is from the ridge, top of the ridge board, where it touches the ridge, the top of the ridge board, and to the wall. Okay, that's the wall way down, you know, yonder. And uh, so you want to just get a measurement from that tip to that. And then when you've got that measurement, 
that is this. So you put that on a measurement right there. So from the tip to the wall, from the tip to the wall, and then that point is the point of this. So you go over there, you stick it right on that point, you mark it out, bing, bang, boom. You got your bird's mouth cut. And when you cut bird's mouth, uh, you know, you don't have to use a, a jigsaw and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, just cut it. Let me see if you can still see here. Yeah, you can still see. Uh, just simply cut it a little bit long on one side. So, Cut it, you know, it's a round blade, so you cut it through, and uh, anyway, I can't do it like this because it's a weird angle. So, don't follow my direction as far as uh, being offline, make your lines perfectly set up, and the paint just falls out. And on this side, it's perfect, there's no extra cuts. Okay, so the board's still viable. Uh, you just cut it a little bit extra on one side. As the blade's round and yeah, well, you're done. It's a nice precision cut and you don't care. Okay? So that's the whole deal. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down below and I'll talk you through it.